bridges. The history of these constructions, invented either by nature or by man, dates back thousands of years. And apart from the very beginning, bridges turned out to accomplish the aesthetic function as well as the utilitarian function of transportation. Bridges have always adorned cities. Sometimes they can even be their unofficial symbol. What is London without the Tower Bridge? Or San Francisco without the Golden Gate? What's interesting is that of all existing bridges, it is, of course, movable bridges that show the biggest variety. There's a great variety of their kinds, types, and subtypes, and there is always something new. We're going to do something next to impossible. We're going to make a complete list of movable bridges all over the world, even the most incredible concepts. The biggest number of bridges in the world is of double-leaf bascule bridges. They work on the principle of a balance scale. Attached to each of the leaves, there's a counterweight, which, when the bridge is being opened up, facilitates the hydraulics or the mechanics of the bridge to lift the heavy bascule leaf into the air. There are other peculiar designs. For example, a tilt bridge in Gateshead, England. However, the operation is based on the same principle. The upper arch is the counterweight, with the design being different from the bascule bridge of St. Petersburg in appearance, but not by definition. Our aim today is to find absolutely innovative movable bridges, unlike any other movable bridges. Let's see what we'll manage to do. Let's start. This is a double-leaf drawbridge, nothing special. It's only that you can't find a second bridge like this in the whole world, because the thing is where these leaves go when lifted. It was opened quite recently, in October 2013. This bridge, officially called the Pont Idre, and unofficially simply called the Port Bridge, is a part of the extensive harbor reconstruction in the English town of Rio. This harbor has been uh, used by commercial traffic for probably more than a century. Um, but in recent years, what we've been looking for is new opportunities to build on our tourism offer. As it often happens with bridges and with movable bridges, and even more so, this project was carried out both for the benefit and beauty. What we wanted to do was have something iconic, something really groundbreaking. And the type of construction involves, for example, that the use of composite materials so that um, we've got a really groundbreaking bridge here. A rare example when the construction is 100% in harmony with the environment. When the bridge is not lifted up, it resembles a ship, thanks largely to the mast in the middle. The solid steel mass acts as a supporting pylon for cables and the entire bridge lifting mechanism. When the leaves are lifted, the bridge looks like a seagull with raised wings. The point of drag looks like a classic bascule bridge just the opposite way around. Usually the leaves of the bridge are lifted open to the shore, but here they are lifted to the central pylon. Moreover, the bridge doesn't have any counterweights. Its spans are made of strong and light composites. Therefore, the whole process is controlled only by steel cables and hydraulics. It may seem that both stands counterbalance each other when being lifted, but this is not true. If desired, the spans can be lifted separately, the right span or the left one. 
All the uh, comments we get are very positive. We've got a lot more people coming in and out of the harbour using the coastal path, using the cycle route. And it's also such a contrast from the other bridge we have across the harbour, which was built in the 1930s and was a trial for the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which, of course, is an iconic structure in its own right from that era. So here in this harbour, we like to think we're really at the vanguard of bridge construction. But there are movable bridges which people rarely see. Such bridges are usually built somewhere in a country, and they're considered to have unattractive appearance. And this one is a neighbor to a plant. It takes 20 minutes minimum by car to get from here to the nearest settlement. But this is, by the way, the world's largest vertical lift bridge. It is 46 meters from the water level to the top of its pylons. This is almost the height of a 16-story residential building. A distinctive feature of the vertical lift bridge is huge pylons. It is believed that because of them, such bridges aren't, as a rule, built in the city. They look too heavy. When lifted, the entire span, without changing its horizontal position, goes up the pylons. And after the river traffic has passed, it returns to its place. The opposite of a vertical lift bridge is a ducking or submersible bridge. As you can guess by name, its span doesn't go up, but goes down under the water. There are only two such bridges built in the world. For 30 years, they have been sinking and emerging on the Corinthian Channel in Greece. The vertical lift bridge works like an elevator in a residential building. Look, on each pylon there is a counterweight, which is connected to the span with a cable. And therefore, everything is simple. The counterweight goes down, the span goes up. Vertical lift bridges cannot boast beauty or grace. However, they are strong, reliable, and durable constructions that can quickly let the river traffic pass and withstand the weight of cars and even trains easily. Transporter bridges are very rare. There have been approximately 20 such structures built in total in the world. Of these, only six bridges have survived to this day. Three are in the UK, with only two still working, operational. This is one of them. The second name for such bridges is ferry bridges, and here's why. The principle of the transporter bridge is really like a ferry crossing. The platform with people and cars goes back and forth, from one shore to another, not on the water. It moves on the cables attached to one or more mobile platforms at the top. I don't have the heart to name this design modern, but in fact, this industrial retro style is its main advantage. The Newport Transporter Bridge was built at the beginning of the last century at the request of the owner of the local steel plant, John Lysacht. The production of steel was to be located on one side of the river, and all the workers lived, well, naturally, on the other side, in the city. He came down to have a look and he said, oh, well, how do they get you? Well, there's either a four-mile detour around the castle bridge, or there's the ferry going across. The height of the tides 
uh, the second highest in the world in this area of the United Kingdom. Uh, they looked into uh, swing bridges and conventional bridges, and uh, none of these options were, were viable. Too expensive, possibly too costly to life. So somebody had heard about um, Arden in Ferdinand's. Um, he was a French um, engineer. For more than its 100-year history, this bridge has changed little. It's only that earlier it was an actively used ferry, and now it's become a tourist attraction. The gondola of this transporter bridge can carry six cars and 120 passengers. It takes the gondola two minutes to cover the distance from one shore to the other, which is 181 meters. Ferry bridges have the lowest traffic capacity among all movable bridges. But their design is unusual. And despite their rather large size, they have an amazing elegance. So it will continue to leave? Hopefully it will continue. It's uh, supported by Newport City Council. Uh, people, whether they'll want to take it on, I don't know. I'd like to think that it will continue uh, working uh, for the future of Newport to be one of the best attractions in the area. This is a characteristic feature of movable bridges. They can be built to solve transportation problems or to attract tourists. The Horn Bridge. This is a one-of-a-kind movable bridge. What I mean is that you cannot find another bridge of this design in the world. The Horn Bridge design can be called a folding bridge. That is, this is the only folding movable bridge in the world. Though you might think it's a quite small pedestrian bridge, moreover, it's located in a small German town. However, it's a unique engineering structure. Yeah, there was a suggestion from, uh, from an architect who, uh, who was uh, Volk van Mark from Hamburg mm -hmm. and who um, yeah, decided let's take a very simple, uh, simple bridge uh, in general and have a kind of toy in the middle. People come and uh, tourists and see the, the little moving part. The whole budget was um, was not very uh, influenced by, by this part. The horn bridge folds in the form of the Latin letter N. The principle of its operation is a rather complex system of cables, though no counterweights are used to lift it up. Maybe because this bridge is pedestrian, it spans our light, designed for a small load? Though, even they gave the builders a hard time. Next to the folding bridge, there is one more. Here it is, a pedestrian sliding bridge. In fact, it duplicates the horn bridge, and it seems there's no sense in having it. But having this second structure is a local urban anecdote. The Horn Bridge was to open in July 1997, but at first its mechanisms failed to work properly. And when it became clear that the bridge wasn't going to work at the due time, an inexpensive sliding bridge was built next to it. That's how the town got two movable bridges for the price of one.
Is this construction possible only in small bridges or it could be used in big moving bridges? I think it's okay uh, when, it's, when it's very small, but on the other hand, I think it would be technically possible to, to do uh, bigger bridges like this. One of the advantages is that uh, when you get storm here, stormy weather, there's a very small area that's contacted by the, by the I wind. See. So. I see. The Scottish town of Falkirk certainly could not be named a popular tourist place. Before this mechanism was constructed, its official name, Falkirk Wheel. It is not a bascule bridge at all, but rather original lock flights. But not to tell about this engineering miracle would be a wrongdoing. It is best viewed from above, from the air. This wheel, more precisely the world's first rotating boat lift, is a part of the Millennium Link project. The project to restore the system of navigation locks from the Scottish city of Glasgow to the coast coincided with the beginning of the new millennium. Actually, the whole design might never have happened, but here the difference in heights between the upper and lower river is 24 meters. So, the choice of the builders was simple, either to construct many, many locks, which will take plenty of time for ships to go through, or to create such a sophisticated but fast system of boat lifting. Today, anyone can take a ride on the boat and be lifted up by the wheel. Usually, tourist boats go every 20 to 30 minutes, and the whole tour through the channel takes about one hour. That's how the whole construction works. Two gondolas, or two caissons, are put inside the rotating wheel. Boats go in the upper and lower gondolas. The wheel rotates 180 degrees, and the boats go out. The most striking thing is that there is very little energy spent on rotation. Because, according to Archimedes' law, the boats force out the water from the gondolas, equal to the weight of their own submersible parts. They equalize each other. Even if there are two boats in the upper gondola and one in the lower one, both gondolas weigh the same. Thanks to the ideal balance of the upper and lower gondolas, the energy required for rotating the wheels is the same as for eight electric kettles to work. The gondolas or caissons are kept horizontal thanks to the train of gears. After the 180 degree turn, the watertight doors open and the boats can go, down or upstream.
The most curious thing is that initially this project was not intended for tourists. It was a state project for the restoration of the navigation through the canals of Scotland. And this is an example of how the original design of the boat lift has completely changed the state of affairs. It's become so popular with tourists that now it is, well, such a center of tourist attraction for people from all over the UK. The Falkirk Wheel is a bridge for river transport. Incredible in its design, the construction which has become one of the informal symbols of Scotland. But you can find an even bigger wonder among movable bridges. This construction is actually a movable bridge too, perhaps the most unusual of all you have seen so far. It is amazing both in its form and principle of work. The cage is a 12-meter pedestrian bridge. It was invented by the designer Thomas Heatherwick. The rolling bridge consists of eight triangular fragments working by hydraulics. The bridge rolls and unrolls once a week, on Fridays at 12. And in general, there is no practical sense in this, except the opportunity for rare tourists here to observe the amazing process. Why people all around the world think that this is the most uh, interesting mobile bridge? Well, I'm delighted to hear that. Of course, of course. <laughs> Obviously, I think it is too. Uh, it's a big tourist, attra tourist attraction in Paddington. Um, for us, the reason, it's, the reason we wanted to do something here is we wanted to create some animation in the basin and some excitement. And Paddington's always been the seat of pioneering, the, se the seat of engineering firsts. Uh, um, the idea is to create some excitement around the base and it's part of our placemaking agenda but also leaving a mark, creating a, a very important mark which is this is something special and unique. The most striking thing is that very few people walking on this bridge realize that it is an amazing and unique engineering design that is right under their feet. Of course until the bridge comes into motion this process doesn't leave anyone indifferent. This is, perhaps, the secret of the charm of movable bridges. They really exist only when they move. There are more than a dozen types of movement, and there is not one universal type. There are the simplest and most sophisticated movable bridges, economically advantageous and visually effective. Bridges on their own and movable bridges even more so are, first of all, a combination of science and art, technology and beauty, that has become so relevant in the 21st century. And like in all such combinations, it's only in their symbiosis that something really interesting can appear today.